Hello, I'm Mary Sue Sweeney Price, Director of the Newark Museum, and I invite you to visit the museum to see our most recent centennial exhibition, 100 Masterpieces of Art Pottery, drawn from the extensive holdings of the Newark Museum and a visual treat. I'm Ulysses Dietz and I'm the Decorative Arts Curator at the Newark Museum and I'm the curator of the exhibition 100 Masterpieces of Art Pottery, 1880 to 1930. I'm Althea Mead Hajduk and I am here today because I'm a potter. I'm David Rago of David Rago Auctions, which I own in Lambertville, New Jersey, and I'm here today to talk about pots. This exhibition looks at over 100 pieces of pottery spanning the years of the Gilded Age in the 1880s in America, right up to the beginning of the Depression. And each of these pieces was conceived and produced and purchased as a work of art. The exhibition has big pots and it has little pots. It has Art Nouveau pots, arts and crafts pots, painted pots, very plain sculptural pots, pots, pots that are drab, pots that are brightly colored. And you could take a piece of clay and use your hands and throw it into a pot all in one action. You could pour liquid clay into a mold, which is called slip casting, create lots of pots that were exactly the same and then decorate them differently. Every single way of making pottery that are still used today were being used 100 years ago when these pots were made. I have in my hands a piece of Gruby pottery, a mac green, cucumber mac green piece of pottery that in many ways exemplifies the arts and crafts movement in America. Uh, having been made in Boston, which was the center, the first center of the American arts and crafts movement around 1900, the piece captures what uh, a collector friend of mine called an organic naturalism. Gruby pots look like they're, they're picked rather than potted. They're an extension of the earth of which they're made. They're hand thrown. There's an upward energy flow to them. The better of them, such as this one, are decorated with uh, tooled and applied uh, organic designs such as leaves or leaves and flowers. You, you, you kind of want to water it. There's something alive about it. And if you think about what predates American ceramics before 1900, you have a, a rather European approach, a highly formalized approach to the decorative arts. Whereas uh, by the time Gruby came into being and what Gruby exemplified was this more American, easygoing, organic aspect of pottery. It is of the earth and Gruby is a very earthy pottery. The piece I'm holding is shaped like, uh, I guess, like an eggplant, garden egg, eggplant. Okay. Uh, it was made in 1914 by Anne Munger. And what appeals to me about the pot, and because I am a potter who makes work now in this period and in this age, is that it's reminiscent of contemporary work. The color, uh, I don't know, is this okra? It looks like a fruitcake batter, like a wine cake batter. So it has a kind of brownish, creamy, greenish uh, kind of look to it. It's not a glassy, glossy glaze. It's also kind of buttery. It's dripping or running from the lip. It's not precise in terms of the form. So it wasn't cast, you know, somebody actually made this with their hands. It has a very even, balanced feel to it. So I like that about this pot. It's very simple, but there's a certain um, subtle elegance to it, which I really admire. This piece of pottery was a real surprise to me. It was made by Royal Copenhagen in Denmark, and everybody who knows pottery thinks of them as doing pretty white vases with little flowers and swans. This thing is so wild and experimental that it looks like something made well into the 20th century, even though it was made in the 1890s. It's, it's slip cast, it was cast in a mold, it wasn't handmade, and yet there are features on it. There are these dimples at the top that look like somebody pushed their thumbs into it, and it sort of swirls at the bottom that looks like it got twisted, but it's all part of the mold that the piece was designed to be cast in. And so this, this seems to be imitating handwork in a slip cast piece. This incredible crystalline glaze was something that Valdemar Engelhard, who did the glazing on it, was messing around with in his lab. And the whole back of the piece is kind of scorched and scaly, and yet it was still sold by Royal Copenhagen because this was so radical and so new, they just couldn't resist and they had to put it out there. This piece of uh, Rosenberg porcelain, 
which was made in 1909 in The Hague. It's undulating baluster form, four-sided with a flaring rim and with painted yellow open tulips on each side. And I picked this because it's the one I like the most and the one I like the least for totally different reasons. <laughs> Not merely to be a contrarian, but what I like the least about it is that it's an Art Nouveau piece that copies very closely something that was done perhaps a decade earlier in France when Art Nouveau was in full bloom, no pun intended. On the other hand, what it does is sublime. It's a beautiful piece of decorated porcelain. The, the painting on it is as good as it gets. The firing, technically, the piece is beautiful. It, it seems flawless. These pieces done in America, for example, this time very often, you won't get this level of clarity. Or if you do, you won't get it on all four sides. One part of the kiln may be hotter than the other, and so the artwork flows on one side, whereas it's crisp on the opposite side. This is perfectly fired, and the integration of decoration and form is, is highly Evolved. The flowers, the way they're painted, take into consideration the shape of the vase, which shows that the artist chose the piece and chose the artwork and represented them in unison. There's a harmony there that you don't see on many decorative art pieces. It is an exquisite work of art, and so things that I don't like about it are overridden by just, it's just perfect. This exhibition tells a story that no other museum in the country can tell. A hundred years ago, the idea that something as humble as a vase could be presented to the public as a work of art was still a radical new idea. And this museum decided to do exhibitions about pots and say, these aren't utilitarian things. These are works of art and they're made by artists and they're beautiful and their craftsmanship is wonderful, whether they were made by hand or made in a factory. And it presented this amazing range of aesthetics that represented modernism a hundred years ago. And there's still no place in the country you can see this kind of pottery all in one place. I'm Mary Sue Price and I invite you to visit this exhibition and all of the treasures in our 80 galleries. The Newark Museum, 100 years always new. To learn more, visit us at newarkmuseum.org. The Newark Museum's Centennial Celebration is sponsored by Prudential. Additional support for this exhibition has been provided by Barbara and Bill Weldon and the Helen R. Buck Foundation.